Professor of International Affairs at George Washington University. Welcome to the program, Christina. Is this situation a bit like Afghanistan? Because I understand that the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres was supposed to be part of this virtual meeting, and when he found out that Myanmar's supposed foreign minister, part of the military junta, would be there, he said, sorry, I can't attend. Yeah, I, it was certainly a problem for him, but it was also a problem for the members of ASEAN, which is uh, 10 nations in Southeast Asia. And they had asked the military regime five months ago in April to start working on a dialogue with Aung San Suu Kyi and the NLD and to stop the violence. And the regime has done nothing on that. And more recently, the envoy who was appointed by ASEAN to go and try to jumpstart talks in the country was denied permission to meet with Aung San Suu Kyi, so he canceled his visit. These are all factors that contributed to ASEAN's decision. How is ASEAN trying to pressurize the military junta? Is it imposing sanctions? Most people are undecided about whether sanctions are effective because they argue that actually it affects the population more than whoever may be in control and subject to sanctions. Right. So ASEAN operates by consensus. And within ASEAN, there are countries with many different uh, types of governments and also policies toward Myanmar. So it's unlikely that they would come to an agreement to impose sanctions. And in fact, for ASEAN, it's quite significant that they've made this step to exclude uh, the senior general, Min Aung Hlaing, from this meeting. I mean, that's something that's really unheard of for ASEAN to do. Uh, but I think what's important is for ASEAN to keep the pressure on the regime, because the regime does crave international legitimacy. And they expected that ASEAN would ultimately cave and allow them to participate. Um, so this is going to be a real uh, shock for the regime. And it's important for ASEAN to use this to continue to pressure the regime to engage in dialogue with the NLD and other actors in Myanmar. It seems as if almost every month since February, there's been a new charge placed by the junta on Aung San Suu Kyi. What do you think the aim is here? I mean, to stop her from ever being able to be part of a political process again? Absolutely. That is the purpose. You know, she is their number one enemy because she has the support of the public. Her party won an overwhelming 82 percent of the vote in the last election in November 2020. And she's also been very clever at being able to outmaneuver the military regime or the military leadership over the past five or six years. And one way she did that was she had been banned by the military's 2008 constitution from becoming president. But she created a new position, state counselor, which was akin to prime minister, in order to able to actually be the head of government. So that's just one of many of the things that the military uh, leadership really disliked when she was in power, and they did not want to see her continue in power in the future. They worried that she was going to erode the many political and economic privileges that the military has had over the last several decades. Could you just take us back to February and remind us what the official justification by the military was for its coup, but also tell us what you think the real reason was? <laughs> Sure. So what the regime said was the reason for the coup was there was fraud in the elections. Now, it's true that there were, you know, small problems with the, you know, voter lists, as well as potentially at some of the stations, but at the polling stations. But overall, it was clearly a free and fair election. And the overall results of the election, an 82 percent victory in which the military back party won very few seats. Uh, that was clear. So whether some officials here and there made some mistakes or engaged in some kind of minor wrongdoing, that does not affect the overall result of the elections. So really, the real reason was this coup happened right before the next government was about to sit, and they did not want the NLD, led by Aung San Suu Kyi, to rule the country another five years because of the way that the NLD had been chipping away at the military's prerogatives, and they feared that these were going to be further eroded if the NLD continued in power. Christina, thank you so much indeed for joining us. Very instructive. Christina Fink in Washington.